Hi guys, Jace here. Today we're going to do a bike check of my Norco FS120 Access and also a long term review. Let's get to it. The Norco has 120mm of travel front and rear. In a medium it's got a reach of 448mm and a stack of 588mm. The head tube angle is 67.4mm and the effective seat tube angle is 74.9mm. I've upgraded the front fork for this SID Ultimate 120mm with 35mm uppers. It's got the new race day charge damper which saves about 100 grams from the old model. Offset has decreased from 51 millimeters to 44 millimeters, which increases the trail and is supposed to improve the stability of the bike, which it does. I used two bottomless tokens and set it at 76 PSI at 25% sag. You can see where it's all been tunneled out there, just to save weight, the minimalist look. I set the Deluxe Select Shock at 165 PSI. I have DT Swiss XRC 1200 carbon wheels with Racing Ray and Racing Ralph tires 2.35, 22-21 PSI around that normally. We'll have no problem stopping with the GT RSC 4 piston brakes with 180 rotor on the front and 160 on the back. In the cockpit, we've got a next race face bar with 20mm rise. I've cut it down to 760mm. And you've got the OD silicon grips on the sides. We've got all mountain protection on the top cover, which is very nice, and the physique Targa saddle. 34 oval chainring with a power to max NG power meter, XX1 cranks, XDR pedals. Axis on the rear, XL1, with the eagle obviously on the back, nice rainbow colouring there. The Axis paddles need no introduction, great changing and fantastic reaction from those drop posts. The little added extras are the togs just inside the grips, so I can wrap my thumb round just for when you're climbing to give that extra hand position for longer races. You can drop down to the Revolver FS1 or 2. Um, the FS1 has got GX group set and the FS2 has got the NX group set. So if you can't afford the Axis, you can drop down and just get the same frame on a different set and you can upgrade if you need to. Well, what does that mean in the real world? Well, as you can see, it sucks up those bumps and it rides pretty well. This is a grade three track. It's wet, it's rutty, it's got plenty of tree roots hanging around and a few little drops here. So you, you can see it's, it's coping pretty well. Yes, you have to probably pick different lines than you would on an enduro bike, but it, it sucks up this ground and it covers it really fast. I think the extra trail on the fork gives it better stability and it's not skittish at all. It kind of rolls down here pretty well. With the modern geometry, 60 millimeter stem length and wide bars, it's pretty good when you point the thing downhill. So what about an uphill? You can see here, this is a 20, 25 plus degree gradient. I'm using those tugs well with their wrapping my thumbs around them. But the bike eats no. up the technical uphill pretty well. I didn't feel like my front wheel was trying to lift off the ground. I was just pedaling and trying to get up to the top of the hill here. It also goes well on gravel roads. You don't feel as though you're getting much pedal bob. And there's no need for a lockout on this bike at all. You can see down a wet and greasy grade 4 trail still doing well, still motors down there. A bit better if I had knobbly tyres, but it is a cross country bike, so it does have limitations. So, who's this bike for? Well, one thing, it depends where you live. 
so if you live in an area where there's not too much rough downhill terrain no mountains then it could be for you as a trail bike it also could be you if you're into cross-country marathons if you're into stage racing or if you want to do long days in the saddle it ascends and descends really well it's not the lightest at close to 12 kilos it is not the cheapest at 8,700 US dollars or around about 10,000 Aussie dollars but this bike sits right in the down country area it's got better geometry or more progressive geometry than the Yeti SB100 not quite as aggressive as the transition spur but it sits in that sweet spot in my opinion and I think if you do buy this bike you won't be disappointed so there you have it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to subscribe, just press the button, give me a thumbs up, and hopefully I will see you again soon.